er med Martin Brusgaard, uh, the lead designer on the Secret World, and I'm uh, Ragnar Tornquist, the producer and director of the Secret World. Yeah, I mean, we have an engine that's capable of really producing wonderful, beautiful locations and great monsters and fantastic characters, and, and of course, all of this plays into creating a believable setting. It's a game set in the contemporary world. The Secret World is all about you know modern day heroes fighting the rising darkness. And part of that is making sure that people believe in these different locations that they, they, they come to and they believe in the monsters that they fight. But of course, our, our goal is not realism. This is not a world simulator. This is an action-packed uh, MMORPG. So the reality is more to emphasize all this dark fantasy and you know all this cool action. It's really there as sort of a canvas and a framework to creating a believable MMORPG setting. Yeah, um, and I mean that's that's been definitely a, a challenge for us uh, uh, maintaining this um, when when designing a location, uh, maintaining that uh, it has to support hundreds of people at the same time, um, and uh, making sure that uh, we have cool points of interest all around the all around in the world, making sure that um, no matter where the players go, they will have some cool content to face, um, and also this um, when it comes to the, the play style of an of an MMO, it, it requires a certain real estate for for the game style to work, and I feel that we've uh, managed to come up with something that supports that multiplayer aspect while still maintaining a, a high level of believability that people actually believe that this this could be a real place. Well, a high fantasy setting is sort of different. I mean, yes, you don't believe it's a real world, although I think World of Warcraft this is, it does actually feel like a coherent world to me. It feels like a place that. <laughs> If those kinds of worlds did exist, well, I thought, you know, that, that that's a pretty good representation of it. But we also feel that the genre MMORPGs really needed something else. They needed something a bit more down to home, something that, that people can relate to on an emotional level. A game that's populated with characters that you can believe in, stories that are interesting and modern, and monsters that play up to myths and legends and pop culture that people recognize. So all of this sort of combined it to, like, basically giving birth to this, this setting, which to us was a natural setting for an MMO. Nobody's really done that before, the modern day world and inspired by history and legend. And there, you know, there's so many fantasy games out there, why do another one? Uh, again, our goal is not to sort of create a, a, a most realistic setting, but it is to create a real setting, because I think that buying into a world is, is so important to have that emotional connection between you and the world, right? Right. Our game world is like this huge jigsaw puzzle where you find these little pieces and you piece them together and suddenly you get this blue sky corner here and then you get this thing down here, not sure what it is, and it all builds into this sort of big picture of a storyline that spans millions of years and tons of locations and all these different conspiracies and legends and myths. And I mean, to us, that kind of framework in the world also, again, is about the emotional connection. It's, it's, it's about not like Martin says, you know, the guy who's hungry and wants what is it? <laughs> no, I mean it's it's cool to uh, to actually have a, have a have a purpose in the game. I mean uh, you're not you're not meeting random NPC number 37 and it's hungry and you need to bring in 10 fish. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you have a purpose and and you establish this um, these relationships between the player character and the different NPCs and also um, learning about the relationships between the different NPCs in uh, in the location and it, it feels really good to have this purpose and you, you want to really help them and it, it works really well and you got I mean the the, the characters you meet the fact that we're, we're doing fully voiced uh, roles for pretty much every single every single character not pretty much every single character in the game is fully voiced and there are hundreds of cinematics that that set up the different missions and gives the give it gives these characters weight and personality they're real they're not just some kind of you know farmer here with his beat problem I don't know where that came from. Uh, it's it's real people with real problems. It's Sheriff Bannerman who is trying to hold it together when you know pretty much everybody in town in Kingsmith has died, and she's trying to help these last survivors. And the players they can't bring him out of the fog. It's impossible, and they're trying what they can to to keep these people alive. And in the end, we really want to see what players, what characters players like the most, and they they sort of love and care for. And then we're gonna kill them. <laughs> we really want the world to have an emotional impact. We want the world to change over time as well. I mean, this game, sort of one of the themes we're playing very strongly in this game is, is the nature of heroism. And in MMO, it's very strange because you can never be the chosen one. Any sort of MMO that says, you're the chosen one, thank you for saving the world, I and mean, that's bullshit. I mean, you didn't. You contributed, and that's the point in this game too, to, to sort of maintain that status quo. I mean, that's the role of the player, just to protect the secrets of the secret world, to go in there and and do a more selfish 
a heroic mission in a way. You're, you're helping your faction and you're helping yourself. You're really not trying to help anybody else. And we're really good building a story around that. I mean, that's the nature of MMORPGs. But we also want the world to change over time. I think what WoW is doing with Cataclysm is fantastic. That's exactly what the game should do. It should take something that people are familiar with and like and then just twist it and, you know, the, and, and turn it into something completely different. And that's something we've been talking about as well. So, yeah, we'd like to, to kill off kill off the most popular character and the character that everybody loves going to that's going to be the target for assassination I, I think i think stories are not about sort of single experiences i think they're about the communal experience in, in a lot to a large degree even when you're playing the mmo and and you get your mission cinematic and you're the you know you're, you're the star of that mission cinematic and all the other people in the world are sort of gone for a second i think it's still sort of about sharing that like you know, went to Helen Bannerman and she told me this and this. Oh, yeah, you go over there and do that. And I think these guys are part of this conspiracy. And I mean, it is a communal experience. It is a social experience. And and, and, and stories, as much about playing through it and sort of finding all these little jigsaw puzzles and sharing that experience both in-game and outside the game and, and sort of realizing how this world is built. And it's not just about these cinematics, not just about these characters. It is about you and me experiencing this world together in beautiful harmony. Ah. <sighs> Uh, no, I mean, players don't have to follow the story in this game. To, well, to a certain degree, you do have to follow what your faction tells you to do. You've been recruited, you, you're being told to, do, to go on these missions and to do what your faction tells you, to do something else. It's very detrimental to your future in the world in a lot of ways. I mean, you are part of the conspiracy now. You have to do as you're told to do. But, you know, you can deviate from, uh, you know, you can take a pause from the story mission. You can deviate from it. You don't have to follow that to its conclusion. You can have fun and do tons of other stuff. Um, the faction stuff comes into play with the PvP as well, and not everybody's interested in PvP. For those who do, I mean, that's the sort of the gentleman's war between these three factions is extremely important. I, but I think, Martin, last, I mean, what about the improv class? I mean, is that going to be <laughs> like, a, like a big game feature that you, players will be able to, 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 to experience? Yeah, I, I um, s unfortunately, uh, during uh, PAX, I, I think I mentioned that we had the uh, improv class and you could... Uh, could shoot uh, monsters in the face with swords. Uh, that was uh, just a lie. It wasn't because uh, we haven't implemented it yet. But of course you can, and we're implementing it right now. <laughs> right? It's uh, it's our thing now. <laughs>